and um, I'm taking, I want to be a, just like you, Daddy, uh, as well, to uh, get a bid on the uh, casting and the mold of this piece so that I can set a price uh, on it. All right, this is going to be a video uh, guided tour of the whole casting process from delivering the clay to the foundry to uh, uh, the how they cut it apart to the molds, the uh, all the way through to the end where they color the bronze. Uh, I've gone over all my videos that I've had on YouTube, uh, collected uh, everything from 2008 to 2014, and so I've got bits and pieces from each, uh, one with a tour that I gave to a, a friend's wife who was dropping off her clay for their first, first bronze. And uh, I hope you uh, learned something from this video about the whole process of casting bronze. This is six years of videos. Oh, I don't know. You know, I would double that thickness probably. Okay, so if you got some clay that I could use. Yeah, Matt's got some upstairs. Okay, I'll take it up there if you want me to, and I'll just yeah, do it up there. Yeah, why don't you take it up there? He can help you. Okay, I'll just do that. All right, what I'm doing is I'm just going to thicken up the uh, base a little bit here because it's uh, the stem going down from the uh, clay itself is just a little too thin for the casting process and they like to have a little more strength so I'm, I'm going to double the uh, thickness of the uh, clay. So I'm going to turn off my camera because I don't have a tripod. And now I'm going to do the final act which is uh, signing the piece and uh, just show you what I'm doing here. I don't know if it's in focus though. Is that true? Want something else okay? Yeah, see this will work. Oh no, this will work fine. Get my thumb, my finger out of the lens. I don't know what the addition size is going to be on this yet because I've still got somebody that might purchase a copy so if they do it's going to be two copies instead of one but uh, it could work out to be just one of one. So we'll see what happens. And I put the copyright which is right there. That protects the image for my lifetime and then 50 years past it. That's the uh, way that works. And uh, I'll put the date down here. 5. What is today? 12? Yeah, it is. 12. 11. All right. That's it, complete. And I'm going to just leave it here and then we'll find out what the costs are after they get a chance to look it over. Pieces that will come apart and then we'll also probably cut the legs here and here for casting. Yeah. And probably take his head something to cast yeah. that. Well, the whole head will come off because it's, it's just a... Yeah, but we'll, we're going to leave it to mold it though. Okay, you can, okay you're going to leave the hat on too? Yeah. And then because I'll do, I, I got it so you can take it I'll off. And I'll do a three-piece around the hat. Okay. So you can see they cut the rifle, the musket off already. So Matt, how long do you think it'll take to make this mold? Mm, a little over a week. It takes about that much time. Because you got to let each layer uh, harden, right? Right, and just all the preparation, getting it ready. Yeah. Um, is a couple days worth of work, and then it's going to be a couple days worth of rubber. Mm -hmm. And uh, a day at least, a day for plasters. And then the next day, I'll be able to start taking it apart yeah. and getting the plasters ready. So. Yeah, when they get the waxes, I want to come in and just check over them. Oh, good. So if you could leave a message for me. Yeah. All right. So anyway, you see how they, they prepare it. This is a, his uh, left hand and, and forearm. And they mount it on this thing. That's how they're going to make the mold of it. This is his back coat. And they're going to make a mold of this as well. And this is uh, the musket and uh, part of the coat lapel. And then he just uh, he just gets all these things separated, and, and he makes these so that the, there's less work to do as far as uh, pouring uh, or waxing it, uh, working on the wax. That cuts down on cost.
We're going to go to the wax room now where they take the rubber mold and that Matt makes and uh, pour wax into it. <laughs> <laughs> Now these are molds up here uh, waiting to be poured into, and they're not doing anything right now, but this is, uh, they have one pot of wax melted that's hotter than the other one. They do it cooler because uh, the first one has to have a, a finer uh, coverage, and then once they get that to do the first uh, layer of the mold, then they put this uh, cooler wax in there, and that thickens up the uh, wax in the mold. And here's a mold that's had wax put into it, and that's how they get the hollow wax, is just by uh, doing that uh, like that. She's getting a thrill out of a warthog here. That is, that is cool looking up. That is neat. Be careful putting it back in. Yeah, that's kidding. I'll put it exactly like that. Now, up here is another one of mine. Let's see. That's called uh, Prayer on the Wind. You really get the face. You can turn it around. So you can see it. And I got a little relief of his memories of life as he sits there with the buffalo who's uh, oh, God. disappeared. I mean, you just get the face. Yeah. Oh, I like your face. That is cool. Got it? Do you have it? All right. This is uh, the wax of... I want to be like you, Daddy. And it's just out of the mold. It looks like it's not completely clean yet. There's a lot of rough areas up here on the top of the hat. And some little nicks out of it here that probably didn't get completely poured out in the mold. This is what the young lady does uh, that works on the waxes. She cleans those things up. Now, over here are the uh, waxes of uh, that little cowboy. Ready to be dipped in ceramic solution, which... Uh, uh, they makes the second mold. You notice inside here, he's hollow. That's what they do. They make a wax copy, and it's a hollow wax copy. They use a paper cup that they've dipped in wax to be the pour spout. And these are tubes, or what do they call these? Uh, ah, brain's just tired. Sprues. These are sprues. And that guides the wax into the body of the uh, of the uh, young man once it's uh, melted out of the uh, ceramic mold. So that's that part. And you can see they cut off the back of his hat. That's so that uh, they get an even pour. Now, this shows you how it's finished off here, hollow again. There's the top of his hat there, which is hollow. And sprues on these two items so that they can be poured. This all burns out of the ceramic mold, which is the next process they do. This here is the Plains Warrior uh, in pieces. Uh, these are the arrows, the ends of the arrows that he's holding. Uh, I think, how is he holding it? Yeah, like this. He's holding those like that, and that's set cast separate. So that's the top of the arrows with the uh, the feathers, and then this is the bottom part of the bow. And that's just out of the mold. They haven't uh, done anything with that yet. And uh, here, what they do is they store these pieces in uh, a box of popcorn. And as you can see, they're still cleaning this piece up. It's still got the uh, seam from uh, the pour. And then you can see where they put a sprue here just to keep the sides from collapsing in. This is, somebody asked me what they do with the armature, and this is the armature rod that goes into the back. And they just cut this off and then uh, clean off that part in this stage. And then they'll cut this a hole in there so that uh, it's castable. I'm going to go ahead and put that back down there. Now this is the bottom part of the Plains Warrior. Get this popcorn off so it's not spreading all over the place. We've got some popcorn up the side of it. 
But you can see there's popcorn on under there, so I'll just get that out of there. You can see it's hollow. I'll run my finger through there. That goes up one leg. And there's the uh, waistline where they join the two, the top half and the bottom half to it. This still has to be cleaned because there's still seam lines on it. So anyway, that gives you an idea what they do to uh, prepare these for casting. Let's take you over here. Some more of the little cowboy. Now I'm going to take you in the mold room, the ceramic room. Okay, this is where they dip the wax into ceramic solution. And uh, you can see some of the molds. These are not my pieces here. These are somebody else's, but it gives you an idea what they look like once they've been dipped in the ceramic solution. And uh, how many times do they dip them? Um, these ones have been dipped uh, six times. About six times? Including the seal. Okay. So they dip it about six times, including the seal. And some of them, the bigger ones, they put chicken wire on just to give the uh, ceramic mold a little more strength because that bronze, when it, when it goes in, is really heavy. And I've seen a mold break because uh, of one little weakness in the mold. Now, he's going to do a process on one of these, so I'll just uh, video that. This is not one of my pieces, it's somebody else's, but that's, that's okay. It gives you an idea what's going on. First, the ceramic solution. through the mold uh, storage area and these are all rubber molds by different artists all stored on shelves and this is just one storehouse there's there's several storehouses every one of these shelves are just covered with different molds and they're all uh, labeled and uh, some are ready to go and some are just being stored for the next time an order comes in so and that's a good 10 feet high, that shelf. So that just gives you an idea how much artwork they're producing here at Northwest Art Casting. This is where they cast the bronze. Okay, so we're now we come from where that sand is to yeah. this step. Now they take the ceramic molds and they put them in this oven here. Right. That melts the wax out and the wax pours down into that pan. And they can re re reclaim the wax. Wow, so now you have that a vacant hole. shell. Yeah. Oh. We're going to take the uh, molds that have been heated up to 1400 degrees. Well, that's a great way to do it, guys, instead of sticking your arms in there. Oh, this is wonderful. That's too cool. do is they just uh, take them over and put them in the uh, racks. Wow. Let's stand right here. Are we okay here? 
They're putting it in uh, with asbestos on some of those bigger ones, and then they hang uh, the smaller ones on the rack. Boy, you can feel that heat. Back over here. That's just over 2,000 degrees right there. It's skimmed off. Okay, 2150. Hi, Matt. 2150. Holy mother. 2150, wow. Yep. 2,150 degrees. All right, now they start to pour. Now this goes back thousands of years what they're doing right here. Yeah, kind of. Not the same materials exactly, but uh, the same way. That's all we're gonna get. Yeah. Look at how that puppy glows. And look at that. And boy, let me tell you, that's hot. No kidding. You can feel it. I could feel it five feet away. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even think about it. I got my car keys, but I'm not. Now giving see, they those. put <laughs> they put bronze ingots back into the uh, crucible, and now they're going to melt that down. How cool! Oh, cool. What'd you put in there? Three uh, ingots. Oh, cardboard. No, in the in the bottom that burned. That's cardboard. Oh, cardboard. Okay. Why do you put cardboard there? Uh, cardboard creates carbon when burned. So when it creates carbon, it uh. The crucible is made out of silica sand, so that stuff at a really high temperature. It's like a little layer. It'll start sticking, yeah, because it's silica sand uh, layered on uh, clay, I believe, what it is, and that silica sand will slough off over time. Yeah, I was going to ask you what the crucible is made out of. Physically. Yeah, it's a silica sand on the outside and the inside. So of it the can clay. stand many thousand degrees. Okay, that's the horse from uh, this piece called the uh, A New Beginning, and this is a mountain man coming out now. They're bringing him out here to cool off. They're spraying it with water just to cool it down a little bit faster. Why do you spray water? All right, the reason he's spraying water on it is because it takes out the hot spots. Uh, you don't want the bronze to cool unevenly because then if it does, it cracks or it and There's the bronze <laughs> ring, it's there. No, it's gold bullion. Yeah, go pick one up and see how heavy that is. Oh my gosh! Woohoo! That is heavy. <laughs> yeah, we go over to uh, this place next door. So they take uh, the uh, bronze that they've uh, you know, broke out of the mold. Yep. And then they sandblast the uh, bronze. Now see, this one's waiting to be sandblasted. They did repairs on it, and uh, that's why you see a lighter color. That's where they've done the, uh, now they got to sandblast it again. Now, bronzes, bronzes, they can't uh, color it or sandblast in that little unit there. They have to bring them in here to sandblast them. That's why, like that big bird. Yeah, but that's why that big bird did it. Yeah. So that's 
that's where they finish off the bronze. But let's let's take a look at where they do the welding. Wow. On a, uh, a like a lobster, yeah. Working on a lobster right now. Can you imagine what the casting cost of that would be? With all those legs. Now this is Lance. He does all my metal work. Final uh, grinding and preparing it for coloring later on today. This is uh, worth many horses, and you can see how she's cut up and not been welded back together yet. Uh, that's how the uh, bronze is prepared for the coloring process and then uh, the finishing process. Lance is just working his little buns off. Over this and just check on things. What's this little ridge right there? Is that just? Uh, well, look at you. I got another one flashing. Yeah, because that's I don't want that ridge, yeah. and I don't want that either. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm just uh, marking little food. little uh, things that need to be worked on. Can you stand them up for a second? Yeah. Now where I'm marking is uh, things that he's going to uh, work, work on once he, I leave here and go back to work on the other piece. I know that's me, but see how... I think they're just, they're just clay spots, but we can yeah. sure smooth them out. Yeah. Yeah, and just you know, smooth out the finger a little bit. Now I got some cross patching to do on it. Yeah. Feather to chase out, and we're then we're ready for cross patching sand. Can, can you turn it just a little bit? Um. Yeah, you got some things to do there, I'm sure. Got a little sand, a little cross patching. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. It's not too bad. It's yeah. Pretty, pretty decent. Getting pretty close. Isaac will put a final approval too. Yeah. But uh, I figured I'd just look over real quick before you yeah, get might as to that well. point. Yeah. Might as well. All right, that's little, the little hammer ding right there. You might. Yeah. Have a little chipping hammer ding. Chip the of course, I don't know. That's got a fingerprint in it. Yeah, right next to it. Could be me. It is a fingerprint. <coughs> and if there's a fingerprint, that's me. <laughs> So anyway, that's the uh, color of bronze. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, this is sandblasted uh, copy of uh, work many horses. Uh, I'm just going to go over it and make sure there's no outstanding problems with the uh, bronze. Everything that's good. I think we're ready to go on this one. All right. We have a number on this thing yet? Oh no, that's the one thing I didn't know if you wanted to start with one or that isn't for that's not one. I wonder what Don wants to do. Alright, they're putting chem he's putting a chemical on here uh, to uh, darken the, the bronze. It's uh, a cold uh, chemical. He doesn't have to heat up the bronze in this stage. This is just the first stage of uh, coloring a bronze. Can I close this? Yeah. Dark blue beads. Okay. So these are all dark blue. Yes. Yeah. And then on the uh, yoke of the dress, do this kind of a red. The yoke. So yeah. Is okay. that that's, that's, that's above this uh, yeah. thing here and, okay. and, and there? Polish that. The beads are polished. Now I thought we would we could go with this coloring on the beads. I don't think it'd be that hard to do. It might give it just a little bit more color too. That that. that yeah, it wouldn't look uh, blend in with that too much. All right, what he's doing now is just uh, with a uh, just a kitchen Brillo, one of those plastic green Brillos. He's rubbing back the areas of uh, that will be lighter color and not quite as dark. And uh, well, we'll just keep on going with that. Okay, this is one of those Brillos. Uh, this is kind of a, I guess, an industrial one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but it's the same, almost the same thing that you use for cleaning your dishes in your kitchen. 
They used to use uh, uh, steel wool years ago. We still do. But steel wool is really fine, and that's more of a finer layer. This has yeah. more grit to it. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many Blackfoot Indian women had brown hair just like that over there. And it'll look black, you know. Yeah, but you just imagine sun splitting off it. Yeah. Stuff. Something I can't be in the room for is uh, when they do the Inkerlac, which is the varnish that they put onto the bronze to uh, seal the bronze and the colors and to also lock down the, uh, 
the acid so it does, you know, it stops its uh, action of uh, corrosion. So he puts on ink relax and then they put wax on top of that. So it's, that's what they're doing right now and I can't be in the room when they do that because it's very toxic. That's why he's wearing a heavy duty mask. He just put the base on. I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> oh, great. He put the uh, base on with the bolts. Now he's getting ready to put the swivel on with uh, some uh, uh, felt on the bottom of the uh, round board that goes below the uh, swivel. And he'll attach that to the uh, in routed out area on the bottom of the base. And so the bronze will be able to turn and all that stuff. All right, uh, from Northwest Art Casting in Bozeman, Montana, and Scott uh, Billis here. He's the owner of the, uh, one of the owners of the... Bye. Bye.